everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry and today we'll be having another playthrough. Today I'll be playing through this game right here, Roombound, in particular the third edition designed by Lucas Litzinger and published by Fantasy Flight Games. This is a two to four player fantasy themed game that takes place within the Runebound or Terranoff universe. However, I will be playing solo today. There is an official solo or cooperative mode in the Unbreakable Bonds expansion for this game. I will not be playing with that. I will only be playing with the base game. And basically the way that solo works is whenever you engage in enemy combat, you cast the, the tokens because there's tokens that will be cast for combat in this game. And you resolve the enemy's decisions as objectively as possible in their best interest. So this is what the game looks like set up. This is board right here is a map of the lands of Terranoff with all of different landscape and terrain features. The um, four different major cities, Riverwatch, Dawnsmoor, Tamalier, and Forge. You shuffle up the asset deck of cards, which consists of different weapons, equipments, artifacts, uh, relics, and other types of assorted items. And you deal out three and place them in these market spaces here, which correspond to the four different cities in the map, which when you enter these cities, these cards that correspond with their city are available for you to uh, buy by using the shopping action. You also set up all of these different adventure tokens, which come in three different colors, orange, green, and purple, uh, all corresponding with different types of adventures themselves. And you place them on pre-populated or pre-designated spaces on the board. Uh, you shuffle up the three different types of adventure decks, the orange, the green, and the purple. You shuffle up the story deck. This is definitely a story-driven game you put all the tokens aside here are some lore tokens here you have the gold and your life you shuffle up the skills cards and you will deal players skills according to their stats now let's see what character i've chosen for today i've chosen lord hawthorne and here is this poorly painted by yours truly miniature that represents him first of all let's look at his stats this cube and the number three right there indicate that he has a speed of three which means i get to roll uh three by default three of these movement dice when i take a movement action his life is nine which means he could take nine hearts before he is forced to use actions to heal because when you have no life left, when you've taken all your maximum health, then your next action uh, ob obligatory is to heal, right? Then finally, we have his skill level, which is three, which means he has a maximum hand capacity of three of these skill cards. And I'll explain later, later what they do. Also, each character gets three of these tokens to start with. These are the tokens that you will be casting to um, engage in combat and you're hoping to acquire more tokens as the game progresses in order to fight stronger and bigger bad guys. All right, then you have some attributes here. You have your body or might here, which is a three. That's as high as it gets. That's the red circle here with the little fist symbol. Here, there's a little eye symbol in yellow. And this is your understanding or your mind. And he has a score of one, which is as low as it gets. So all the attributes range from one to three. And then here, this little swirl in blue, it's your, um, it's your spirit. And for his spirit, again, he has as low as it gets. It's a number one. The back of the card, first of all, it tells you your setup situation. If you have any trophies to start the game with, it tells you how much starting coin you get. In the case of Lord Hawthorne, he will start with three gold coins. And finally, it tells you where the player can start. There are three different types of special locations along with cities, aside from cities, I should say. You have your towns, you have your shrines, and you have your strongholds, which are indicated by this symbol right here. So I can start the game with Lord Hawthorne anywhere on a stronghold space. And I've chosen this spot right here, which is called the Sunder Yard, because it's very close to a city, in particular Riverwatch, which means early on in the game, I can enter that city and engage in a shopping action. So that's why I've chosen that one right there. Also, let's read any other special abilities that Lord Hawthorne has. It says he has Reach. Once per combat, after resolving a combat action, you may immediately take another combat action. So that is a very interesting um, proposition there. 
So, because usually combat, it's adventuring, and adventuring usually takes two actions. Therefore, you can never do uh, any type of adventuring twice within the same turn, because you only get three actions per turn. But in this case, I have that special ability if I want to do so. Also, he has what's called Vicious Strike. Once per combat round, as a combat action, you may exert... Uh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. This is not that I get to take another adventure. This is specifically for combat actions. Because when you engage in combat, you go back and forth with your enemy. You take one combat action and they take a combat action. Here it says I can take two in a row. Okay, so that's still very helpful. Because it increases the chances that I might be able to knock out another opponent before they could even touch me. Okay, so again, Vicious Strike. Once per combat round, as a combat action, you may exert to recast any number of your tokens. So that's really good. And exerting is a very important ability in this game. It, it's a way of, I guess, cheating the system, so to speak, and buying yourself additional uh, experiences, um, opportunities. You can exert to, to re-roll a die, a movement die. You can exert to draw an additional card for a skill test. And here, apparently, Lord Hawthorne can exert um, to recast any number of his uh, tokens here. So what does exert consist of? It, ex it consists of simply discarding one of the cards from your skill hand. And remember, at my skill level is three, so I'll never have more than three cards in my hand at once. So the most I could ever exert in a given round will be one. Okay, so that's pretty much it as far as setup. We have some tokens designated here for the enemies. Let me explain how the game actually works as far as storyline is concerned. We have two acts here represented by this time uh, token right here and we have this round track here each act consists of 12 rounds so there will be a total of at least 24 rounds possibly more less more likely more in this particular scenario because the particular scenario that we will be confronting involves the evil mastermind the lord dragon margath and this particular um scenario can potentially lead to uh, more than 24 rounds because the way that the High Lord Mar Margaf or the Ascendants of Margaf scenario works is well first of all this card here tells us that the, these white tokens here represent lore which will give us additional abilities for fighting Margaf it'll make him weaker it tells us at the end of Act 1 we will spawn the Margaf token which basically represents the big bad dragon we will spawn it in Sky Down which is right over here this spot right here and we can spend an action to fight him from that point forward so from the beginning of act two we can fight him but that would not be wise because we will need at the, at the very least the most most of act two in order to level up our characters and strengthen him right so there's that it says if a hero defeat margoth he or she wins the game so that is the end game winning condition but it tells us that act, after act two ends Margaf is going to start making his way towards Tamalir, and you'll be rolling all the movement dice and for every wild he will move one forward and if you have not defeated Margaf by the time he reaches Tamalir, you have lost the game so that is something to keep in mind all right so there is that all right so we've got these tokens I pretty much got everything under control let's begin the game the first thing I'm going to do so on a player's turn they have three actions that they can get they can use and you can repeat the actions as long as they you have the currency so to speak the action points to spend most actions only cost one action point the only action that costs two action points or two actions as i alluded to earlier are the adventuring right so whenever you go on an adventure on any of these color-coded spots that's going to cost you two actions you can move which is just one action. So therefore you could repeat it theoretically three times in a game. You can rest, right? Which depending on where you rest, if you rest on a regular spot, you roll dice in order to heal. If you rest on a city or one of the three special locations, the strongholds, the towns, and the shrines, you can heal fully for resting in said locations. You can train. Training is a way of drawing new skill cards to either replenish your hand or replace your hand because you don't like the skills that you have. And the way training works is you draw cards equal to the amount of your hand. And then from the two uh, sets of cards that you have, the, your previous hand and the current new that you draw, you must end up with a total of three. You always have to have no more than your maximum capacity. 
Um, and, and then of course you could shop. Shopping is another action. And finally, any special action that perhaps your character card has, which in my case, there is none. All right. So let us see what we're going to do. The first thing I want to do is I want to move, right? I want to get into Riverwatch, right? So I'm going to go to Riverwatch here and I'm going to roll my movement dice. All right. And this is what the movement dice looks like. So first of all, I got a wild. I could use that to enter into any space, right? Because that's the way it works. You gotta your your the terrain you roll on these dice have to match the terrains that you traverse through as you're trying to get to where you're trying to get to. I've got the field and I've got this water or mountain space um a dice or die. So first of all, I got a field or a while I could enter there, and then I could enter, you can enter a city with any type of terrain die. Any type of terrain die can be used to make that one final step inside a city. So that's very convenient. So I will do that. I'm in Riverwatch. And now I'm going to go shopping. Now, every time you go shopping in the city, the first thing you do, there's always three um, items or assets available. The first thing you do is you flip over the top card from the asset deck and you add it so that you have a fourth option. So now I have these four options. I have the Cursed Claw, which is an equipment and will earn me a an additional token that I could use when I engage in combat. I have the Leather Armor here, which is also a token, right? And this one costs three. This is a clothing asset. I got the Elven Armor, which is very expensive. It costs eight. It'll give me plus one life to my total and plus one skill to my total stat. So that's pretty helpful. Um, it does not give me a token, right? So there's that, but it is another clothing. And then finally, I have this art of, uh, this armament here, which is a goods, which I could use to trade in for five coins, but I must spend an action in a stronghold in order to do that. So these are my four choices. By the way, when it comes to these cards, you can never have one of the same color type at the same time. You can have as many goods as possible. But of the clothing, equipment, and weapons types, you can only have one at a time, right? So you so you cannot end up with an uh, infinite amount of these tokens. At most, you can have six tokens if you have a equipment, a weapon, and a clothing that come with a token. So I'm going to get this armament here. It costs me two coins, but that's fine. Because if I trade it in a stronghold, which I just came from one, if I trade in a stronghold, I'll be able to collect five coins. So that's a three coin profit. So I have one more action left on this turn. And I am going to move again. I'm, I'm, I'm aiming to get here. This is called Fort Roderick, uh, Fort Roderick. And it's another stronghold. And it'll keep me somewhere between Tamalier and Forge, which are two cities that I'm mildly interested in going to in order to shop. So I'm going to roll, see how far it gets me. Okay, so this is what I rolled. Uh, so a field is always helpful. Unfortunately, field hill, hmm, not as good as I wanted to. Uh, I could exert and discard one of my skill cards, and I think I will do that in order to re-roll. So the skill cards, let me explain. First of all, um, they're always associated one of, with one of the attribute types. They also tell you inside the card what's their additional ability. Here, this raises your spirit attribute by one. This uh, ambitious skill raises your skill stat by one. And this here, once per combat round as a combat action, you may remove a foe's uh, blank token to deal the foe one axe damage or one physical damage that cannot be blocked. This is a pretty good one. Um, I'm going to say that Well of Power is the one I'm least interested in. Even though my character's spirit or, yeah, spirit stat is very weak, I'm going to discard this card to exert. And by exerting, I'm able to re-roll one of my dice here. So I'm going to set aside that, that right there. I'm going to re-roll this and hope to get something that's useful to me. And I rolled the exact same thing I just finished having. So I exerted for nothing. Um, okay, so I'm going to have to live with my consequences here. I'm going to work northward. 
and I'm going to use a field die here to move into that spot. And I'm going to use this water die to cross over this river right here. So to, in order to cross over a river hex, you need to spend a tile that has water. Regardless of what the, the hex mostly consists of, you're going to need water. So there's that. So I'm going to end my turn right there. And that's the end of my three actions. And now I will move this timer down to the second spot on the round track. And this little uh, star symbol here indicates that a story card will be played and read. So let's see what it says here. It says, Wisdom of the gods. Compared to the gods, even the greatest heroes are but a speck of dust in a windstorm. And then it tells you that this is a story quest, which means it's going to be associated with a particular spot on the board. You're going to need one of these story quest tokens to indicate that is, well, where, what, what that spot on the board is. It says, place three lore on this card. If there is no lore left on this card, remove the story quest token from the board and discard this card. It says you could spend one action and then spend one trophy. And the trophy are these adventure cards that you acquire throughout the game whenever you successfully complete an adventure. It says you could spend one trophy to take one lore from this card and train for free. So I already explained that training just is a matter of adding more skill cards and then finally choosing three to, to keep for your final hand. But the lore, for each lore, each of these lore is going to make Margath, the bad guy, the dragon here, it's going to make him a little bit weaker, right? So Margath has minus one heart for each lore his, four, his foe has, which is very important because his life starts at 15. So having those lore will be helpful okay so there is that so this card here indicates where i'm trying to put it here so this looks like it's between a forest and a lake right here hunter's circle okay so hunter's circle right here is where story quest number one will take place and i will place story quest uh this card here on the spot designated for the first story quest so that whenever I go here, I could just go back to this card and refer to it in order to remind myself what is it that I'm trying to do here. So first of all, the card instructed me to put three lures on here. And remember, if I go here, I could use an action, discard a trophy, and gain a lure. All right, so that's that. So that's all that happens. Now we move on to my, my normal turn, and I will roll my dice because I want to move. Where did I end up? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that I ended up right here. I made, I did this and then I did that. All right. Sorry about that. So let me roll these dice. Okay. This is a little bit better, perhaps. Um, field. Oh, yep. This is not going to be too bad. I'm going to do, I'm going to use the wild, I'm going to use the field. Then I'm going to use the wild. So this was the field. I'm going to use the wild to enter here. And then I'll use the hill to enter here. Okay, so that was one action. Then with my second action, I will move again. And I've got, ooh, this did not turn out too well for me. And I do I want to exert? Maybe not. Um, there's not much I could do with this. I'm going to have to exert, guys. I am going to have to exert. Alrighty. So I'm going to exert. Well, I need a hill. I desperately, desperately need a hill. You know what? I'm going to re-roll this. So I'm going to spend. I'm going to exert, which again means discarding one of your skill cards. So I could re-roll the die. I'm going to re-roll this one right here. And I roll the same exact thing. That's the second time I exert and re-roll the same exact face of the die. That is pathetic. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Um, uh, I'm going to make the best out of this. Field, field. I wish I had a hill. Field, field. Oh, guys. That's too, too bad. Field, field. You know what? No, but I only have 
This is my second movement action. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even be able to adventure because adventuring costs two. So for my second move action, I'm going to end up right here, field and field. I'll start that quest next time. I won't be able to do this adventure here because, again, I, I've used two of my actions in order to move. And adventuring costs two actions. So instead, I'm going to use my third action to train. I'm running out of these cards, these skill cards. So I'm going to train. So I draw cards equal to my skill level, which my skill level is three. So now I have these three that I just drew plus the one that was already in my hand. And amongst these, I need to keep three of them. So cartography here, first of all, it's really cheap. This price, this uh, These circles here, actually, I didn't explain earlier, indicate their price in order to actually possess those skills. These skills are in your hand, but they all represent potential skills that you can use later on in the game. For now, they're just a currency to exert. But if you ever spend trophies equal to the number of circles here, right? And again, the trophies are the successfully completed adventure cards. Then you place this down in your player area as a skill that you have officially learned and can utilize for the rest of the game. So for this, this for example, only costs one of any type of um, trophies. This, though, costs three trophies, and at least one of them needs to be a green trophy. This here costs four trophies, and at least two of them have to be orange, right? So I think I'm going to discard this one it's very expensive and i'm gonna have to complete a lot of orange quests a lot a lot of orange adventures and the orange adventures are mostly combats so i would have to shed lots of blood and successfully so so in order to do that so that's all i'm gonna do we're done with my second turn so we are gonna roll down here and nothing happens on this round this is round three and the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go on this adventure so the first thing you do so it's gonna cost me two out of my three actions you flip over this token to show that you cannot just go back and do this adventure again. There are certain spots on the board, these green uh, squared spots that have these uh, green, purple, and red uh, token symbols on them. Every time the track, the time track, makes it there, we refresh all the ones that have been exhausted. And then you have an additional opportunity to use them again. But for the time being, we've used this one. We're going to flip over the green card. The green quests are mostly, uh, the green adventures are mostly quests. They involve different adventures that you'll be doing, going on different specific spots of the board and trying to accomplish a specific dice roll in those locations. So each of these different adventures uh, correspond majorly or primarily to what the symbol shows. So this is a quest. The orange um, adventures are combat, and the purple adventures are mostly social. However, within each of these three decks, you do have all three of the kinds of adventures. The combat, the um, questing, and the social interaction. However, they each, for the most part, consist, or each of the decks, for the most part, consist of the type indicated on the image, right? So you, you're kind of playing a little bit of push your luck. There is a, a slight chance that you might end up getting something that you were not anticipating. But for the most part, you have a good idea of what you're getting yourself into. So let's flip over this card and see what it is. And this is actually what a social interaction looks like, which would be these. This is not, this is not what the quests look like. And it says, Shrine to Pollux. A pious wanderer tells you of a shrine to Pollux nearby. Pollux, he says, is the god of artifice. Pray to the god and test your spirit. Refresh one adventure gem of your choice for each success and take this card as a trophy. So first of all, I would be able to refresh this gem. But I have to test my spirit, which is very weak. It's only a one. And I would have to accomplish it, succeed in just one try. Or piety does not interest you. But tell the wanderer, but the wanderer has other tales to tell. Become delayed. And basically when you become delayed, you lay yourself flat. And your next action is to undelay yourself. Become delayed to look at the top three cards of this particular deck, the quest deck, and choose one to draw. Discard the others along with this card. This is really tough. I could choose the top three and basically choose the, the adventure quest that best suits me, but I still would have to fulfill it. While with this, if I test my um, spirit and succeed... I will gain this as a trophy immediately. Um, and I'll be able to refresh that 
spot right there as well. So I'm actually going to test it just to show you guys what a test looks like. So again, with a test, each of the tests um, take place within one of the three different attributes, your body, your mind, and your spirit. You look at your score or your stat for that particular attribute, and that's how many opportunities or free opportunities you get to test. So for example, with the spirit, since I am a one, I only get to test one time, which means I get to draw just one card from here, and I'm looking for a particular symbol that looks like a success. Let me see if any of the cards I've discarded have it. Yes. So every card that, that is a success has this little star symbol somewhere here on the upper right-hand corner of the text box of the card. Most cards do not have that little star symbol, right? So I'm going to draw this card, and I'm looking for that star symbol. And I've got it, folks. I've got it. So when you do that, you also discard the card that you just drew to test. So sometimes you might draw a potentially amazing skill in your test, but it doesn't matter because you're very satisfied because you've succeeded. Now, if that would have been a fail, I could have exerted in order to test more. So theoretically, I could have exerted three times because I have three skill cards in my hand if I wanted to in order to try three more times, right? But it's at your own risk. So I've succeeded. So this allows me to refresh this gem right here. And to gain this green card as a trophy. And now i got to start looking at my skills that I can activate or I can learn. This cartography here is pretty good because it tells me that I gain one gold whenever I gain a um, green or quest trophy. So I might just do that right now because I'm going to be aiming for these green ones in order to fulfill this one right here, Honed Instincts. It says if you roll a wild while questing, you may resolve any outcome on that quest as if you had rolled its require requirements. So that's very cool because on quests, you're rolling the dice and you're trying to accomplish certain combinations or configurations of the dice rolls according to what the quest is. But here it tells me that if I roll a wild while questing, I can accomplish any of the outcomes. Because again, each of the quests have three different levels of outcomes, each with a better um, result or a better reward, I should say. Okay, so we're done with that. I am going to, and this does not cost an action, learning a skill does not cost an action. I'm going to learn this cartography um, skill. I'm going to spend this green trophy. So now every time I gain a green trophy, I will earn myself a coin. So that is perfect. All right. So now I am done. And now I have one more action because that was the only thing I've done so far. And going on an adventure costs two actions. So I'm going to try to move. I want to get to this shrine here in Fort Roderick. So I'm going to need a field, a field, and a hill. That's pretty realistic, especially the two fields, because those are the most common terrains or the most common faces on the terrain dice. And I've got two fields and a hill. So that is awesome. I'll be able to do field, field, and hill, and I'll be ready for next turn. All right, so now we move this down to round four. Again, nothing special happens for round four. For my first action, I am going to turn in this armament and trade it. It tells me I need to spend an action in a stronghold, and I am in a stronghold. And I get five gold coins in return. So I will trade this in for five gold coins. And now I got a total of six. So that was just my first action. Now, what do I want to do? I think I want to go to Tamalir and get this... Get one of these items here, the supplies or the, the uh, material, in order to trade for more money. Uh, in the meantime, I could also work my way towards this green quest. That would not be a bad idea. Okay, so that was just my first action of the turn. I'm going to roll these dice, see what they tell me. Huh. I could do a forest. Oh, do I want to exert for this? No, I, I like my... I like my two... Once for combat, you may remove... Maybe I do want to exert. Maybe I do want to exert. I have a forest. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm going to exert, guys. I am going to exert. This right here is of no use to me. So I will exert to reroll one dice. And I rolled the same exact thing, guys. You got to tell me, stop exerting, Harry. Three times in a row I've exerted. 
three times in a row, I've rolled the same exact thing every time I exert. So that is a waste of my time. So this is pretty much what I have to work with, a field and a forest, oh, oh, or two fields. And neither one of those is that great for me. Um, you know what? I'm just going to go field and field. And with my third action, I'm going to move again. And I have a wild, which I'm just going to use. Or am I? Huh. Huh, huh, huh. I am going to use my wild, my field, my hill, and my wild. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use field right here. I'm going to use this hill right here. And I'm going to use this wild right here. So I can end my action there and start my next turn with an adventure. All right, so we're done. We move on to round number five. And there's another story. We have here the dragon cult. It says the dread are a splinter cult that believe dragons are the divine fire of Kelos made flesh. The dread believe the dragon wars were punishment for mankind's many sins. And that the dragon fire will burn all the lands and purge the unrighteous. In turn order, each hero must flip one adventure gem face down. So I'm playing solo. I'm going to flip over this adventure gem. It's a red one, which I tend to not be very confrontational. And it's on this far out corner here that I might not, never actually ever go to, right? So there's that. And also, at the end of the day, it's about to be refreshed next turn anyhow. This is a great story for when you want to, a story card for when you want to hurt an opponent who's near. So for example, an opponent of mine could have, you know, turned this over and I would have wasted my time going there. All right, so we're done with that. Now it's going to be my turn. I have three actions. I'm going to use my first two actions to go on this adventure. Hopefully it's a quest. And it's another social adventure here. It says, fly by. A crack of wings, a piercing roar, and a pillar of flame. The dragon is gone as quickly as it appeared. Try to dodge the dragon's attack. Roll one terrain die. If you roll a terrain symbol that matches your hex, you gain one lore. If you do not roll a terrain symbol that matches your hex, you take five damage and discard this card. Or if you have at least two lore, take this card as a trophy. Otherwise, test your might to take this card as a trophy. So I cannot get it straight up because I don't have the two lore. But these are my two options. I could either roll a terrain die and hope to roll a field symbol. How many of these faces of the die? No, I'm sorry, hill. I should say hill. I've got two sides that have a hill. And I've got a wild. So I have a 50-50 chance of rolling that. But if I don't roll that, I would take five damage. If I do, all I get is this, I get one lore. However, with my second one, if I test my body, which is my strongest attribute here, and I succeed, I'll be able to gain this card as a trophy. And remember, every time I gain a card as a trophy, since I have the cartography skill, I gain a gold. So I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to test my, my, my body, which means, or my might. I'm going to get to draw cards equal to my attribute score, which is three. So I'm going to do the first one here. And it's already a success, folks. So I don't even have to keep on trying. I've already succeeded, which is awesome. And because of that, I gain this card as a trophy. And every time I gain a green trophy, I gain one coin. That's awesome. So that was my first two actions of the turn. I am trying to desperately, folks, get over to Tamalier. Or maybe I could settle for Forge. I have, let me see, I have seven coins. Is there anything in Forge that's worth it? Um, hmm. This, this weapon is amazing, but it costs nine. I need, I'm going to need a little bit more money. I want to get a Tamalier and get the materials so I could turn it in for two gold. So let's see here. Ooh, that's a pretty good roll, folks. All right, so... I'm just going to take the shortest path possible. I'm going to use this hill right here. Uh, one, two, three. Actually, no. I'm going to use this hill right here because I want to get myself into the fields where it's more likely. I'm going to use this forest right here. And I'm going to use this wild, sorry, this wild to enter this field space right here. Okay. And I'm done. Those were my three actions. Now we move on to round six. And again, when you make it to this spot right here, this green square with the three colored symbols corresponding to the adventures, you refresh any exhausted 
um, ones, which I forgot to exhaust this one, but now it would be refreshed. And this one that the story made me exhaust earlier would also be refreshed. Okay, so everything is fresh, fresh, fresh. All right, here we go. So now it's my turn. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move. I'm hoping to get the Tamalier. I'm going to need either a wild or a water to cross over those rivers. I do have a wild. I do have a wild. So I'll use this wild to get into this water space. And then I'll use this green right here to go there. I wonder if I want to quest there just yet. Probably not. And I'm going to use this green right here to end up right there. Okay, so there's that. That was my first action of the turn. I'm going to roll again. All right, so I could use this field to enter here. And then any of my dice can be used to enter into a city space. So I'm in Tamalier for my second action. And then finally, for my third action, I will go shopping. So whenever you participate in a shop action in the market of a city, the first thing you do is you draw the top card from the asset deck. You add it to that market's um, collection of cards. So now I have four cards to choose from. I just drew here the... Mirror of Souls, which looks like a really interesting card, but it's also very expensive, an eight. But I'm just going to get this material here for free, right? Right here's the cost. I could trade it for two coins. I need to use an action in a stronghold again. So those are my three turns of the round. So we'll move on to the seventh round. Nothing happens here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move. And I want to get to a stronghold, but I also want to work, work my way towards Forge. Because there is this trust steel, true steel axe that I really want to get over there. And uh, I think I'll be able to afford Because I have seven coins, and once I turn this in, I'll have a ninth. So I need to look for a stronghold. This is the closest stronghold to Forge. I might have to work my way around from Forge. Well, you know what? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make it to this spot right here and go on a green quest. All right. So I got a field and a field and a field, which is the most likely result. And I'll work my way over here. By the way, if you're ever working your way through spots that have roads, they, they work very similarly to cities in that you can use any die you want to keep on roll, uh, moving through a, a road. You need to already be on the road space. You can't use it to enter the road space. But once you're on a road, you can turn in any dice to keep on following that road for as long as you wish. All right, so there's that. That was my first action. For my second action, I'm going to go on an adventure. Hopefully this is a quest. Maybe not. Yes, it is, folks. So this is what a quest looks like. It says here, Spring Festival Quest. Bright Vale lies to the north of the Aim Helen, home of the Latari. So where is Bright Vale? We're looking for Bright Vale. It's west of certain mountains right here. Right here we have Bright Vale. It tells me I could use one action to explore Bright Vale. And depending on the different results, again, if I roll just one field die, um, I have no bonus. But if I roll a field, a field, and a water here, I make new friends and I gain one bonus a uh, purple trophy. That's not bad. And I'll also gain this trophy, right, for succeeding. Um, no matter what, you're going to get this trophy, right? So even there's no bonus one, you just you, you, you still get this trophy. You just won't get any additional reward. But if I get a field and a wild, it says I win a game of chance and I gain two gold and I may spend two gold to explore again. And if I roll the wild again, I gain four uh, gold. So this is an amazing quest, the Spring Festival. I'm going to set this aside here. So that's motivation to actually go southwest, away from Forge, which is where I want to go to. But it might be worth it. Okay. So that was my second and third action. Now we'll move on to the round. And we'll go here, which indicates another story card will be read. And we have Panic in the Free Cities. In panic response to dragons and cultists, the Free Cities have sealed their gates and restricted their trade. Scarcity drives up prices, while new tolls on highways delay travelers. In turn order, each hero may trade a goods for one additional gold. Then, also in turn order, each hero, not in a city, must either spend one coin or become delayed. Oh my goodness. So, the good news is, I get to trade in this goods for one additional coin. So, I'll get three coins. The bad news is that bonus coin I made, I'm going to have to spend anyways 
because I'm not in a city, and if I don't, I'll become delayed, and I don't want that happening. So, but it, you know, overall, this was still good for me because it saves me the work of having to go to a stronghold, which is something that I was debating which direction I should go in. So now that eases things up as far as that concerned. Okay, so now I'm gonna start working my way southwest and try to get this Bright Veil vale quest taken care of. So let's just move as fast as possible. Okay, so the first roll of a water is actually pretty good, but after that, I am not doing too well. Oh, folks, that's why it's always good to, um, <laughs> it's always good to, to uh, have to train and have cards uh, readily available. So I'm just going to move one. I'm going to cross this water over here. And now for my second action, I'm going to train because, again, I'm going to need this exerting. And I look at the three new cards I drew plus the card I already had and choose three to keep from among them. This tireless skill is pretty helpful. Once per turn, I may move one hex. So that's not bad. It gives me one free move. Once per combat round, as a combat action, you may exert and test your spirit to deal two magic uh, damage. My spirit is pretty weak. And this one is also magic. Once per round, you may exert and test magic to block up to two damage. Well, this one's a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to get rid of this one here. Okay, so that was my second action. With my third action, I'm going to move again. Let's see how far I could go. So I've got a field space here and not so good over here. Huh. You know what? I am going to I am going to exert to reroll. So this guy wasn't going to do much good for me anyways. I'm going to reroll one of these dice here. And I rolled pretty much the same thing. Guys, this is the fourth time. Again, this is the fourth time that I exert and roll the same exact thing. This should not be mathematically possible, guys. This is why when I say dice hate me, I mean it. I'm going to exert another card because I really need to move. And I rolled the same. Oh, my goodness. This is, not, this is not even real, guys. These dice are not fixed. Let me show you all the sides. They're all different. Five times I've exerted and five times the same thing. Okay, so I will move here and I am done with my turn. And we'll advance to the next round, guys. All right, here we go. Needless to say, I don't win at this game very often because my dice rolling is pretty bad. <clears throat> okay, so here we go, here we go, here we go. I am going to... <clears throat> I am going to roll again and move. Okay, that's a little bit better. I'm going to use a field here. I'm going to use a field over here. And I've got hill and forest, but as long as I stay on the road... Actually, I'll use this field over here. As long as I stay on the road, I can use this to move along the road. So I'll do that. Okay, so that was my first action. Now we move again. Okay, so I will do... This is pretty bad rolling, folks. Um, so I'm just going to take advantage of this and stay on the road. So I could use anything here. Uh, or actually, let me see. I'll use anything here, anything here, and then I will use this right here. Okay, so that was my second action. And then for my third action, not terrible, I could use this for the hill. And then I could use this. Huh, maybe I want to stay here. No, no, let me do this purple quest. Might as well do some questing. I'll use this here, and I'll do this here. Set myself up for a quest next turn and be ready to enter Bright Veil afterwards. Okay, so we will move down here on the round track. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go on this purple quest right here, which is normally a social quest. And it is. It says here, a contest of wills. This is an event. You're, you hear that another hero has boasted of their magical powers. Perhaps somehow... Perhaps someone should put them to the test. Rumor, keep this card. You may spend one action to challenge another hero in your hex to a contest of wills. Well, I'm playing solo, so that's not an option. Starting with you, each hero tests their spirit and gains one goal for each of his or her successes. The hero who gets the most successes takes this card as a trophy. If it is a tie, discard this card. So I guess I would win if I succeed at all, but that's still iffy because it's spirit and my spirit is weak. Or test your might to train for free and take this card as a trophy. So that is 
a very easy decision. I'm going to test my might, which is a uh, attribute uh, level of three. The first one is a fail. I get to draw up to two more for free. The second one is a success. All right, so I succeeded. I get to get this card, this purple card, as a trophy. So now I have a green trophy and a purple trophy. All right. So, and this skill here needs three trophies, and one of them needs to be green. So I'm one trophy away from succeeding with that one. I have nine coins, which is what I wanted to begin with, but I also want to get here. So I have one more action left for this particular turn. Let's roll these dice. Let's get me to Bright Veil. And I will get to Bright Veil, because I could use a field and a wild to get to Bright Veil. And we're done with this round. We'll move this down right here. This is a story. And the story here says, The Master. And this is a story quest. So let me get story quest tile number two ready here. It says, Feral dragons have always been a threat. And a handful of heroes have, been, have made their name as dragon slayers. One such hero dwells on Exile Peak, offering wisdom to those who need it. So we're looking for Exile Peak. It's a mountain right here off the forest, the Starfall Forest. It says, draw a random hero not in the game and place his or her starting combat tokens on this card. So I've got some uh, tokens, the starting tokens of a different hero, not my character. I can go to Exile Peak and use one action and swap one of my starting combat tokens with any combat token on this card. So this is a easier way of making an exchange between maybe a starting token of your character that you do not like and that of another character. Okay, so we are done with the story and now we'll proceed for my first action. I'm gonna try to solve this quest. And this quest only takes one action. Drawing the card takes two actions. It's only gonna take one action to try to explore Bright Veil. And I'm gonna get this no matter what. You can choose to fail, for example, if the amount that you roll is not to your liking. You can choose to voluntarily fail and try again because you might want the bonus. But again, even at the lowest level, you'll still get the trophy card. So I'm going to use one action, my first action, to try to explore this. You roll For exploration, you roll dice, the movement dice, equal to your speed anyhow. So I will roll these three dice. And I rolled three wilds, which all I needed was one wild. And it says here, I win a game of chance. I gain two coins, right here, two coins, and I may spend two coins to explore again, and if you roll a wild again, you gain four coins. Now, that is a little bit risky, and you know what, guys? I am not much of a risk taker. I must apologize, so I'm going to be done, but because I successfully gained the green trophy, I also gained another coin, so this was great. I racked up three more coins. I have a total of 12, and that was just my first action so let me try to move on back northward northeast see what i could do all right so i've got a field and a field and a wild and that's just my second action and then for my third action i will roll the moving dice again and i've got a field and i huh, you know what i'll use this wild this field to enter to the road and to continue along the road, I'll use this one right here. Uh, actually, no, this field to enter this road here and this one right here. Perfect. There we go. All right. And those were my three actions, folks. And now we move to the last, the 12th round, the last round in Act 1. At the beginning of Act 2, we will spawn Margaf here. Okay, so we're done with that. And I have three actions again. I'm going to move northward here. Okay. And I've got a field. And I've got a wild. This is a wild here. A wild. And do I want to go to Tamalier? Tamalier is cool. But Forge has that tr true steel axe. All right. So that was my first action. With my second action... All right, I've got a, I've got a field, a field, a field, and I'll use this wild to cross over the water. Okay, 
And I still have one more action. I might just stay here. I'm not going to get to forge anyways. I might just stay here so that next round I can have a uh, an adventure here. And instead, I'm just going to train. I'm going to draw three more skill cards and choose. I've been working towards this honed instincts for a while, so I'm probably not going to keep uh, throw that away. Um, oh, oh, oh. What does honed instincts do for me? Uh, if you roll a wild while questing, you may resolve any outcome. Okay, that's not bad. Um, Ascendance. You have one additional action to spend each turn. Not bad. Once per turn, you may exert to look at the top card of any deck. Once per turn, you may spend one action to move to any shrine. That's pretty good. All right, so I'm done with that. And now we will move on to Act 2. The first thing we do is we spawn Margaf here on Sky Down. And this is the last 12 rounds that players have to level up their characters. As you see, I haven't done much leveling up. Our act 1 is pretty slow. I gained one skill, and I haven't really bought any weapons or items to help me. I haven't gotten any additional tokens. I also haven't engaged in any combat because of that. All right, so now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move. Oh, no, no, I made it all the way over here. Let me try one more of these quests here. All right, another quest. Renegade Orcs. This is a quest. Orc incursions have been growing bolder on the eastern border of Terranov. The commander at Fort Roderick is looking for fresh recruits to train. You can use one action to expo uh, explore Fort Roderick, which is not bad. At least it stays in the northeast, which is where I want to stay. So that cost me two actions. I'll be getting that in the future, but right now I'm working my way towards Forge. Let's see here. I could use a field. And you know what? I'm going to exert because I am stuck. Guys, five times I've exerted. And five times, I've re-rolled the same exact thing. I definitely want this. Or actually, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm not going to have to exert. Let me grab that back. I can just use this field to get on this road. And then anything to travel along the road and anything to get into the city. All right. That worked out wonderfully. All right. So now I'm at Forge. Again, when you shop, which will be my second action of the turn, the first thing you do is you draw um, cards. You draw a card. So I have a fourth card. So I have an ancient sword there. That's a weapon. I can only have one weapon at a time. So I'm not interested in that. I am interested in my true steel axe, which will cost me nine coins. There you go. And the true steel axe gets me a token. And right here, it tells you which token it gets. It gets you the one labeled A6. So I'm going to look at the stack of A tokens here. And I'm going to get the one that says a six and here we go so here we got the true steel axe it has one of these surge symbols on one side of the tokens which usually trigger special abilities on your character card or on different assets items or skills or it has this two axe which means it deals two physical damage so that's pretty good i do need to engage in some combat before i'm done just to show you guys how that works so i have one action left let me roll and move and let's see here let's see here i can use this forest here and this wild here so i can end up here and start the next turn with a combat okay so we're done we're going to move over here we're going to read a storyline card and it's a story quest so let me get story quest three token ready for us and it says margaf's legacy the mountains of despair rumble and shake if Margaf returned, perhaps these treacherous peaks could offer valuable clues to defeating him. Story quest. Place three lore on this card. If there is no lore left on this card, remove the story quest token from the board and discard this card. And it indicates these mountains here, which I believe are the mountains. Yep, right here. Madman Pass. Okay. And it says that I could take two actions on this spot to take one lore from this card and advance the time track one space, which is bad because that brings Margaf's victory uh, one step closer. So I'm going to have to put three lore here. We're going to put this on the Story Quest 3 spot, and there we go. Okay, so now I am going to use my first two actions to go on this quest right here. Okay, oh, I forgot to flip this one over when I did that quest. All right, so I am going to... 
go on a combat quest, hopefully, because this actually might not be combat, but it is. I'm going to be fighting this sorcerer enemy. And by the way, these are the enemy tokens that will be casted. They cast more than we do. And in the second act, you actually add an additional token to the bad guys. And this enemy is actually one of the more powerful ones. And he's the one I'm going to be fighting. He has a life of six. Um, he's a mystic, a humanoid. This enemy can spend, um, uh, whatchamacallit, surge symbols as physical attack for the bad guys. But he has these surge abilities. You can remove all your foe's magic tokens. Or if you roll two surges, you could deal three damage. And your foe may spend one magic to cancel this ability. If I defeat this guy, I gain two rewards. So this is what a combat looks like. You grab your tokens, which in my case, I only have four, and you just cast them. And whatever side they land up, they land up. And these gold symbols, the, the gold size that you, you uh, cast, will determine initiative. So I have two initiatives so far. So I have a very good chance of going first. Now I will cast these for the dummy player and or the enemy. He only has one gold symbol. So I, the human player, will be going first. And... These symbols, first of all, to get an idea, whenever you deal attack, you deal all the attacks of one kind at once. So let's see what I have here. I have some surges. I have two shields. I have this right here, uh, which is not that good. Oh, these are the wrong. I'm sorry. I threw the wrong token. These are not... Uh, these are my tokens. I grabbed the wrong ones. Oh, let me recast those. I am so sorry. I grabbed the tokens from the other hero from which I was to choose his tokens if I go to Exile Peak. So let's go here. I've got these. Okay, I still have two symbols, so I still go first. I have two acts here, three acts right here. I also have a surge. His character card does not have any surge abilities, and he does not have any weapons. Oh, no. The True Steel Axe has a surge ability. It says, Smash. I could recast any number of my foe's tokens. That is really good. But if I do that, that means I'm going to do that before I attack. However, once per combat, after resolving a combat action, I can immediately take another action. So I can take two actions in a row. So I'm going to use this to recast any of my enemy's tokens, right? Any number of my foes' tokens. So I do not like these attack symbols right here. And I also do not like this here because what this lets him do, it lets him double any token that he places on there. So we're going to recast this for the dummy player. And that's awesome. I rolled these two symbols, which are duds. All right. And now I get to use my once a turn ability, which is to, to use two combat actions in a row. So you combine all um, attack types of one type. So this is physical combat. I'm going to deal three damage to my opponent. However, he has a shield. So he's only going to take two hearts and his life is six. So now he will go after me and these surge abilities, he's going to use them because if he uses two of them, he gets to deal three damage to me. I have no shields to block. So I'm going to grab three hearts over here. Add them to my character whose life is 9. And now I could use this here. And this allows me to either recast any of my... Or, or flip over any of my tokens. Or force my opponent to recast one of theirs. So I'm going to force my opponent to recast this one right here. And that was a success. He's got this one here. So he's already used the shield. So he can't flip that one over. But... What the opponent can do is they can use this one here to flip over any one of their choice. And they'll flip over this one to have the two attack here. So now I'm done. I can't engage in any more combat actions because I don't have any more combat tokens. However, my enemy here does have uh, this right here, which will deal me two more damage. So I sustained five damage and he sustained two. We are done with one combat round. At this point, I can choose to run away and retreat. I would have to roll terrain dice that match the symbols that I'm next to and in order to run away. But that in itself can be a challenge. So I think I'm just going to engage 
in another round of combat and see where this takes me. So here we go. I'm going to cast these four here. All right. I definitely have priority. And they are going to cast their five right here uh, or six tokens. I'm very weak, folks. I should have been, been better prepared, but I just wanted to show you what combat looks like. Woo! All right. So they have three gold, so they will have priority. They're going to attack me first. And they've got three of these skull symbols. So they're going to deal me three more damage. And I have eight hearts taken away from me. And I only have one left before I'm defeated. And there's not much I could do here unless uh, I am going to use this right here to recast any of my tokens that I wish. I'll recast these three right here. Okay, and okay, that's not too bad, I guess. All right, and that's it. And then the dummy player will have this one here, which doesn't do nothing. This is a dud, so there's nothing they could do with their combat action. They still have one shield to spend, but I spent this one. I can deal two more damage to them. There we go. And now again, I have the decision as to whether or not I want to... Um, oh, they have a shield, so they actually only take one damage. Alrighty. So I can choose whether or not to run away or go into another combat round. And what the heck, here we go. Alright, so I have two gold. I at least have initiative. I think I have initiative. Let's see what they pass. Okay, they did not throw a shield down, which is perfect. I think I might have won this... This combat, folks, for as bad as it looked. So, I'm going to combine these three physical damage to deal three more damage to the opponent who already has taken three hearts. Three more damage gives him a total of six, which is his life. So, he actually lost at a great price. And because of this, I gained this trophy and I also gained two gold as a reward. All right, folks. And maybe... So that was two actions right there with my third action. Actually, this is not even an action. I'm going to try to gain one of these skills. Uh, in a row, you may resolve any outcome of the quest. I'm going to get this Guiding Light, which costs me three trophies. At least one of them has to be green. So I'm going to turn these three in. And now I've got the Guiding Light at, uh, skill, which means once per turn, I can spend one action to move to any shrine. So this could actually help me almost teleport across the board. So that's awesome. And that's it, folks. This is all for today's playthrough. This is definitely, I definitely played more than half of the game. Uh, pretty much showed you guys what you shouldn't do when you play. <laughs> What's an ineffective strategy. But this game keeps on playing until finally players feel confident enough to attack Margath or against once the second act is completely over, Margath works his way to Tamalir, and that is like your final countdown in order to engage him in combat. If any player or the first player that's able to defeat Margath wins the game, it's absolutely possible for both players to be defeated by Margath and therefore there could be no winner. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us here. I'm Harry at Board Games. This is Harry saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.